What's up everyone, 5280 Reefer here, back at you again with another episode. So, in today's episode, I kind of wanted to talk about the mistakes I've made with this aquarium and what I would change if I were to set it up again. So, to start off, I would start off by not making four separate islands for my rock work. I would go back to my old school style of just, you know, starting with four islands, but then having them all connected. That way I have a lot of caves and I just like that look much more than I do the four islands. Those four islands, they they were cool. I thought they were going to be awesome. There's caves and perches and shadowing and overhangs and all that stuff, but it didn't work out like I thought it would and it definitely has some of its uh, negatives with it being that if all the rock work was kind of connected it would be a lot easier for me to find more surface area to put corals um, and it kind of give it a different depth because I could have some corals in the back some corals in the front with little overhangs and, and things like that just yeah I would definitely turn that change that about my tank. Um, next thing, a big thing that I kind of hate that I did, and I think it's a big mistake, was that when I set up this tank, I waited, I did wait three, four months before even turning on any lights on the tank. I was just letting it cycle, let it do its thing with ammonia and, and bacteria in a bottle and all of that. But when I did turn on my lights, I kind of ramped them, ramped the par up too quickly and um, ended up having a lot of issues because of that. Like, I think it was a lingbia um, bacteria that kind of looked like GHA plus GHA plus all sorts of other issues that I consistently had to battle with. Um, and... Also, another mistake I think I made was that I didn't dose enough nitrates and phosphates to the tank. I tried to maintain my nitrates at like 10 ppm and my phosphates above 0.1. And I think that was a mistake in the beginning because in the beginning when you use dry rock, all of that rock is going to be absorbing a lot of the nutrients that we're putting in, like nitrates and phosphates. It's going to be absorbing into the rock until it becomes saturated. Then it will slowly start leaching out those phosphates and nitrates. But I thought I was doing enough, and obviously I wasn't because I did end up bottoming out a couple of times. And because of me bottoming out, I ended up getting dinoflagellates. So I think if I did that alone, um, that would have helped me a lot with the whole dinoflagellate issue. Another mistake that I made was turning on a refugium, honestly. Um, I think I could have gone quite a bit longer without a refugium and now knowing what I know and, and using carbon dosing I don't think I'll ever turn on another refugium ever again because um, it does just pull out a lot of iron and other elements out of the water all of your trace elements which can also fuel dinoflagellates and other issues in the tank um uh, a huge, huge mistake of mine, too, would be fish selection, to be honest, guys. Um, those bird wrasses, don't get me wrong, they are very beautiful fish. And I mean very, very beautiful fish. Extremely active. They swim around in the water column. They add a lot of character to the tank. But they are aggressive, and they do not allow you to have any kind of cleanup crew like if people said that like melanaris wrasses were aggressive and chorus wrasses were aggressive not even close i mean these bird wrasses are a-holes and they chase other fish 
definitely can't have any COC. The The only thing you can have for cleanup crew is pretty much an urchin, and those pins are the only reason why you can't even have them. Um, another big mistake, in my opinion, is that I don't have enough space behind my tank for me to get back there to, like, scrape the glass. Maybe I want to put some MP40s in the back or something like that. And not having that space to be able to go back there just makes a very, very big issue for me. And it doesn't allow me to do that. And I definitely, in the future, when I set up my next tank, I am going to set it up, set it up probably a good two feet away from the back wall so that I can get behind there and I can do whatever it be that I have to do. Um... Last but not least, um, I think I am done with having sumps under my tank. So in like a cabinet, in a stand, or anything of the sort, it's just, you're, you're limited by space, you have to cram everything in there, you know, you have to bend over, you know, tilt your head under there, under the seams or whatever you want to call them, and to work on your sump and it's annoying it makes me not want to do some of the things that I should be doing so definitely for my next build uh, do expect a, a tank that has an external sump like in a completely different room or something of the sort like that but yeah guys thanks for sticking around thanks for hearing me out and as always, you guys have a wonderful day. And today is a special day. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, everyone. Hope you guys have wonderful times with your families and a wonderful rest of the year 